now it's live, but where do I put in the subject line? Oh, it, right when you, before you said live, it, it would, it had the, uh, that was where it was. That's, that was your option. Really? I can't see the option. We're live. Do you want me to go back? No, it's okay. We are in New Berlin. Oh, oh. See? Did you experience the same thing? Okay, so. I'm just going to minimize the live thing. I'll yeah, try. mute it. And we are live. Amazing. So I'm going to share this link. I'm just changing the uh, title right now. Or Jess. Adventure. Okay. Back there. Oh, sorry, Dave Green is ready to come into the meeting. Dave Green, you there? Oh, yeah, nice chapeau. Dave, hey. there you go. We're live, Dave. We're live. We're live. We're live. I'm just sharing the posts on or the live feed on Aford Venture and on the Night Adventure page. So if you guys want to share in your personal before we get right. in, we'll do that. On it. Nice to see you fellas representing. Yeah, you like the Yeah, bud. Yeah, bud. I like that. So let's hope this works out. What is gonna happen? <clears throat> you like you like this? Jan, can you guess what this is made out of? Hold on, buddy. I'm just over on a different page, but I will be right with you and then I will have a look. Is that the hat you're wearing? Because it's beautiful. Beautiful. I'm supposed to do something on my thing? Uh, I'm trying to share this. On Facebook? Are we live? Can you live, yeah. on YouTube when people are joining us, when they're here in the room? We are live on YouTube. Party people of Canada. Party people. Live now. Live. Facebook? Dave, is that made of uh, goodness? I'm thinking coyote, right. perhaps? No, it's not coyote. It's a lot softer than coyote. Much softer than it's coyote. Not, it's not from this country. It's an invasive species in another country. Is it possum fur? It is. Oh, nice. I've got some possum socks that have got terrible holes in them that need to be darned. Uh, to get going because, man, possum is beautiful, beautiful fur. It is. Right. Yeah. We, have, uh, we have 20 people in there watching. So, hello, everybody. Hi, everybody. Pretty cool. Hi, everybody. Let's see. Oh, yeah, you do look good, Dave. Not as good as hey, I do. Dave. Cool. Yeah. Ooh, welcome to the show, everybody. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna put this out there. I mean, I am a diehard non-Leafs fan, but if you're gonna wear any Leafs jersey, it's cool with me if it's a Gilmore or if it's a Clark. Yeah, well, it's it's a smart smart statement. Dougie, um, we get Gilmore on this thing right now. Who do we gotta call to get Doug Gilmore? Folks, um, you know Doug Gilmore, and if there's anybody out there who can get him here for some adventure trivia, now is your time. You will immediately get rock star legendary status. Of course. We're going to keep playing trivia until Dougie jo Gilmore joins us here. That is a good goal. I like that. It is a goal. What about I Dave Anderson? I really liked him as a kid. We had the same name. We had the same name. Me and Dave Anderchuk, and therefore number 14 became my hockey jersey number. Oh, okay. Really? For my whole, for my whole career, yeah. Do you know anybody who could get a hold of Doug Gilmore that we could get here now? <laughs> yeah, I'll get on that, yeah. I well, mean, I, just judging along by his love of milk, uh, I think he would also love some trivia, and therefore we should get him on the line. So... Um, <laughs> I haven't been listening to anything you're saying because it sounds like nonsense. Uh, we have, yeah, we got like 40 people in there. That's sweet. The comments are working. Can people um, just write in the comments? 
Is it easy? Is it easy? Write to in see? the comments. Let us know you're there. Pretty soon, you're going to need to write your team name, all that jazz. Maybe I'll share my screen. I got some rules. Ooh, thank you, Chris. Yeah, okay. let's do that. I'm impressed. Yeah, we got like 40 people in there. Whoa. Taylor Morrison is here, and so is Colin Faircloth. Hello. Emily's in there. Nice. Good to see you all are here from you. Noah is here too. Yo. What up, buddy? So can you guys see the my screen attempting to load? Looks great. Adventure trivia. It has a really nice Adam Baldwin feel to it. I was trying to do throwback. We're really just stealing ideas from other people while doing this. This is called Night of Stealing Ideas Adventure. Well, I, like, I've been listening to Baldwin every Friday night, so we weren't going to do it Fridays. This poster kind of looks like his, and the boys do an isolation bingo from the Town Heroes. This is pretty much spot yeah. on. So, spot on. yeah, I mean, big credit to all those people. Yeah, man. Oh, there's the rules. Fantastic. And uh, I'm seeing uh, that Dylan McDonald's here, as is Renee. Awesome. So, folks, we are going to get started here very shortly. We are kind of probably five minutes from launch, but in the meantime, send in your name and follow the rules that Chris just put up here. Yeah, so this could be really straightforward. I hope this works as smoothly as I'm um, envisioning. Uh, try to keep it as least complicated as possible. Okay. So basically what you're going to do is you're gonna write your team name in the comments uh, when you're ready to go. Just let everybody know what who's playing, what, uh, what team you're on. Dude, who's the smartest, cleverest person out there? Yeah, yeah, maybe bonus points for that. Um, and then we're going to, uh, we're going to have everybody email their answers. So just the team leader email their answers after each round. There's gonna be three rounds, 15 questions per round. Um, and email trivia at aforadventure.ca. And put your team name in the subject line. So hopefully that's pretty straightforward. Um, there's a couple of ways to do this. If I was you, I'd probably have my email open in another bar. We're going to... And uh, oh, somebody went, there you go. Um, and then that way you can just write in all the answers and then just hit send on the email. You could also just write it on a piece of paper. And then that way you can uh, take a picture of it and then email it. That's also pretty easy. Obviously you can need a couple of devices. Sorry. Um, Sorry. One, Dave. Okay, a couple housekeeping questions that we're getting here uh, from folks who are online. The Lumsons are here. That is fantastic. People want to know, and this is critical, are we wearing pants? I'm not going to confirm that. Actually, yes, I am wearing pants. I have my, my daughter and uh, my partner here, so that would be kind of weird if I didn't wear pants. Hi, Hannah. Yes. <laughs> Dave, are you wearing pants? Uh, that's yet to be determined. Okay, depending depending on how the first round goes, Dave will confirm or deny further his wearing of pants. Okay, we got a bunch of team names going down. Corn team. Dave, you grew your hair out. I like that name by Noah Booth. It's a great <laughs> name. Nice, uh, Adventure Dads, Team Blueberry. Beautiful, Blueberry. Oh, Jan, did you see the last comment I put there on the, if you have any problems, obviously just call Jan Sell. He, call me. I'd love to hear from you, actually. I, uh, I'm a big, look, I think I got serious phone game going back to the junior high skills. And then this, if, if I wanted to see people's comments, where would I find it? I don't know how to work this thing. Um, I don't know. I'm looking at a bunch of comments right now. I'm not sure what to Lo tell you. Team Blue Lobster. Yes. The right. J for Journey, Strang Adventures. It must be different on, uh, on the phone. Um, sure. Can smart. I just give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors? Christina Aguilera. Nice, Rebecca. Nice. Oh, look at that, Jen. Look at us. Yeah, yes, folks. Oh, look at you, fellas. Uh, some of the amazing prizing coming tonight is compliments of these wonderful people out there at North Brewing. We salute you. So we encourage you to go grab a drink on your own. Let us know what you're drinking in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. But this one's for you folks. Uh, and also to our healthcare workers. Yes. Cheers to them. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, we do have a celebrity uh, guest appearance that I want to talk about too. Someone who has a very special- Doug Gilmore here? No, no, not Doug Gilmore, even bigger star. Bigger. Put it on the next, uh... oh, where's the next slide? Here we go. Drum roll. There we go. Oh yeah. From uh, Dominic Toretto. So just to make sure everyone doesn't, uh, doesn't cheat. A oh, boy. <sighs> The watch over us. So that's obviously doesn't that goes without saying. Let's uh, let's be honest. Let's be truthful. Let's have some fun. We're gonna learn some stuff tonight, and uh, hopefully this all works out. Nick Allen's drinking Lake City cider. There you go. Represent. Mmm. Yeah. Okay. Or Adam Young. Adam Young. We have a T-shirt that belongs to you that we need to give to you. Oh yeah. Right. Don't leave your house though, Adam. We'll send it to you. Yes. Don't go anywhere. Uh, all right, so people are still writing team names. Should we get going or what do you think? How are we feeling? I'm telling folks right now, this is your one minute till we launch. So if you got to go grab a drink, if uh, you got to get out your encyclopedia, because if you can look this up by encyclopedia, I say that's legit. But you got to show us a picture of the encyclopedia you're using. Yeah, okay, right. Don't leave your house though, Adam. We'll send it to you. Someone's YouTube's going again there. That's Dave. What's me? All right. Well, what do you think? Should we get going? Yeah, let's do this. Okay, Brenton Drinking Club. Nice. Adam Cornick is here. Mm. Okay, so um, I'm just realizing no one can see me right now, right? Because I'm sharing my screen. That's cool. I was, uh, I was just showing off my Doug Gilmore jersey and no one could see it. That's right. We're still looking at Fast and Furious here. We got Adam Hill texting me. We're ready. Adam says he's ready. All right. If Adam's ready, then everyone's ready. We in. Okay. So the round one first question is going to be a photo, and then you're going to have to name the location on the photo. So Dave, go into your audio here. For that, the full screen is just the picture. So question number one, name this location that is on the screen right now. And we'll give you, I don't know, we'll probably do like 10 or 15 seconds. Uh, I'm not going to give too many hints for this one. It is pretty straightforward. It's in a tidal area, I will say that. Oh, my daughter Hannah knows where it is. We've been there many times. It's a pretty popular spot. Hopefully this is a nice, easy start for everyone. And on to question number two. Name this location. Um, as you can see, you can see Adam Cornick's name across the screen. We actually couldn't afford the, the full rights to this photo, so this is the best I could do. Adam's <laughs> way too expensive. Where is this beautiful location? It is beautiful. Yeah. I'll give folks a hint. It's in Cumberland County. Woo, that's a big hint. It's a big hint. <laughs> I'm going to mute you soon. It's too big of a hint. <laughs> all right so location number two everyone had a good look and, and if someone doesn't know uh you know if wants me to go back just let me know in the comments this is a really cool perspective this is a uh, a good buddy adam hill sent me this photo um just this morning actually i thought i would include it i love this perspective of one of my favorite places uh to explore i think i might have gave a hint for anyone who knows adam hill Adam Hill lives in Cape Breton. So there's a hint. Da, 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 da. Beautiful photo. That Adam Hill, he's the one talented guy. He is. And he makes one hell of a pizza. All right. Yeah, no kidding. Which has inspired us to continue doing that through this quarantine. I've made like four pizzas, I think. Um, all right. Number four, location number four. Uh, this is a re another really cool perspective that obviously you need to be in the air to see. And I think this is obviously another Adam Cornick photo, as you can see by the brand there. And I think he was up in Tim Lesperance, uh, up in his helicopter to get this photo. Yeah, great shot. Shout out to Tim. Great shot. Landmark. Yeah. Adam says that's not his photo of Lewisburg. Adam Hill? Adam Hill. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, he's so <laughs> like echo, echo, echo is on the line too. Good to hear from you guys. 
Yeah, so here we go. Number five, name this location. There's a little, little community in the background. That's Jan and I paddle boarding safely with our PFDs on and our leashes. Um, yeah. Look, this is one of my all-time favorite towns. Folks, if you know me, then you know that I love going to this place. Holds a special place in our heart. Oh, that's enough. Uh, a lot of music goes down here. That's, 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 that was, that was oh. wonderful. Yeah, Dave, should we mute him? I think we should mute him. This is I'm just helping the people. Yeah, you are. We should, we right. have to... Number six, this is a fun one. Um, wow. This was the site of a shipwreck. Um, I think it was 2011. And this is uh, another hint, I guess I'll, I'll say, this is in Nova Scotia as well. And I got a couple different photos of this one. This is... The second photo uh, is when they partially started removing it. So that's, there you go. Location number six. Colin says for, to mute me, I say no, I'm staying live. <laughs> All right, location number seven. Another Adam Hill photo, mm -hmm. gem. So that's another, I guess you can probably tell this is Cape Breton if it's in Nova Scotia. This is a really sweet little hike. Um, and another hint, I guess I'll say this is because it's fun trivia, but that little bump in the background is Sugarloaf Mountain, the high peak over there. Also lots of hints, I know. Mm -hmm. Look how beautiful that is though. My gosh, I want to go there. We were just there. Chris and I were there recently. We were. Location number eight. Beautiful Adam Cornick photo. It's the Battle of the Atoms so far. Uh, this is a beautiful spot, another beautiful hike, one of our favorites. Is, is it a prerequisite to be named Adam to be a really good photographer? It, it, in our life, it does, yeah. <laughs> Fair question. Yeah. All right, location number nine. This one is not in Nova Scotia. That is a hint, but it is in the oh, Maritimes. This one's a beauty. That's another Cornick photo. Uh, uh, I also think people should have a close look at this photo. Is that a rare appearance of Mr. Seyu? Brad That's Seyu. Brad Seyu, but if you look closely, he's, oh. wicked, he's rocking a wicked bandana. Oh, yeah. Look at that bandana. He looks oh, like. Oh, yeah, it's green. green. Yeah. <laughs> That's so yeah. dense. That's so uh, much music, 1992. Wow. That's Brad Seyu. That's his wheelhouse right there. You would be so pumped to hear you say that. Uh, location number 10. This is probably an easy one for a lot of people. Beautiful spot. We're back in Nova Scotia. That's beautiful. Is Look at that. I stole, I stole this photo from the interwebs. I think I stole from Nova Shore's uh, kayaking page. Oh, That's a, right there is a huge hint. Okay, if there right. No Nova Shores know that they rock this place. I know. They know it, though. All right. Number 11. This is a photo that I took a few years ago because it is the location of our Nova Scotia health card photo. It's definitely not an Adam photo. <laughs> yeah. I know Adams took this photo. Yeah, no, exactly. That's why it's all pixelated. <laughs> all right, location number 12. This is an Adams photo. And this is probably another easy one. This was taken obviously in the winter time. Um, yeah, I don't need to give any hints. This is easy. It is easy. You know, there are uh, rumors in rock and roll history that the churches named in California Dreaming are referring to these churches. Get out of here. True. It might not be true. That might be totally made up. But I heard that someone say that. We should start that rumor right now. That's fantastic. It's dark. People that live here now. It's true. Uh, number 13. Uh, put a page on Wikipedia. This is a really cool perspective. This is a spot that's very familiar to probably everyone listening, watching, just the neat, neat perspective of this shot. This is also, this is Cornick's photo, I think, from Tim's helicopter as well. Looks beautiful. Yeah, that's cool. Number 14, this is a trickier one, potentially. This is a Chris McFarland drone shot. Um, you can name the actual specific location of where this is, or just the area would suffice as well. Um, but yeah, unbelievable. This is, this is in Nova Scotia. If someone's watching 
and doesn't know where this is, uh, it is Nova Scotia, believe it or not. And the water is always very warm here, as warm as it looks. I'm kidding. Number 14, all right, we're moving on to number 15. This is a different one. This is the Halifax coat of arms. Um, and there's a bird in the middle. Hopefully you can see it well. If not, um, there is a bird in the middle of that and you have to name the bird. This one's for you, Chris Kennedy. Chris, I got to hand it to you. It's like you were really scrambling to find a 15th picture of somewhere in Nova Scotia, but you really pulled this one out of your hat. This is really good. This was Dave Curry. Uh, the former president of the Nova Scotia Bird Society, my, my father-in-law. This was his idea and I thought it was really cool. So I included it. And that's it, this one through 15. Um, Great idea, yeah. If, if you like round one in the pictures or you like the, uh, the logo on the crest there, that type of like visual trivia, give us, give us a heck yeah on the uh, comments he there. Moves. Maybe some suggestions for the next time we do this and some other ways to do some visual trivia. Uh, we're, we're open ears, absolutely. We'd love to hear your uh, comments and responses. Uh, all right. So let's go on video over here for a second. I want everyone to be able to see my Leafs jersey. We're yeah. back chatting with everybody here. Okay, so give everyone a couple minutes. Again, the email, maybe I'll put, I should share that email address, Inferno Trivia at Pay for Adventure. Oh, you made a fancy email address just for this. I did, you like that? I love that. <laughs> this, is, this is a big deal. Yeah, we are a big deal. Doug yeah. Gilmore is a big deal. And this thing will go over the top as soon as we get Doug Gilmore here. Yeah. We're starting it now. What's going to happen? Oh, it's right here. Here we go. We got some answers, folks. Having to look through. We're going to go through the answers here just in a minute. We got some teams coming through. We'll give people some time. I know people might be scrambling, trying to figure out how to send it. Hey Chris, is it .ca or .com? Uh, .ca. A for or, uh, trivia at. I can write it in the. Oh, there you go. Thanks, Dave. Hey, no problem, buddy. Got your back. Uh, we've got people asking Chris where your mustache is, bro. Oh, I got a mustache. I just also have a bit of a beard. I've been thinking about rocking the mustache. So. Yeah. It's tough to find a barber around here these days. It's uh, thinking of growing my locks out again. Yeah, Colin, where you at, bud? I need my hair. Actually, I'm not doing too bad. Just my overall appearance isn't doing very good. <laughs> and I can smell you through the computer. Wow. <laughs> just walking yeah. over here. Well, Look at that just, hat by Dave Green. My God, it's a beautiful thing, isn't it? We got a bunch of emails coming through, so that is a good sign. You know, if the Leafs, if the playoffs started tomorrow, we would still win the cup. <laughs> uh, this is a, a trivia night of lies. All right, Jan, you're getting close to getting muted here for real. Bring it. I'll just I'll just blow out the comment section in here. <laughs> Where are my Habs fans at? <laughs> Shout out to North. Come on. We've got about 15 or 20 emails. So we've got 91 people watching. We might have a few more coming through. So we'll give another another one minute. Uh, so for those who've sent the email, go grab a drink, go use the washroom. That's pretty yeah. good. That's pretty good for the first round. 88. Round two, it's getting harder. Dave Green's bringing the pain with round two. Yeah, I, I kind of hopefully started off slow. I did get a few comments that that was really hard. Oh, Janice, Janice, round two. Janice is the only new one, number 12, whatever one that was, I forget now. But anyway, hopefully that wasn't too bad. Round two is going to be hard like Ty Domi in third period of the seventh game. There you go. Uh, don't worry, folks. I threw some gimmies in in round three. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go back to sharing my screen. Where am I? There it is. Round one answers. Adam Cornick. Question. Uh oh. You out there, Adam? Just sending you some love. Sending all the Adams love. Adam Cornick just got a ukulele. Hopefully you got it in tune. What's going on with my 
screen. What's going on there, Chris? Are we going to turn our videos off for you? Yeah, I don't know. My screen seemed to disappear with my Google. Just give me a sec. Is it, is it showing that I'm sharing? Boom. No, I got... Uh, just turned off. Do you want me to share the document there, fella? Uh, it looks like I lost the thing. Just give me a sec. Technical difficulties here. Yeah, no, we're good. I just got to go back to my... Reopen my browser. My email is just blowing up there. So thanks, everyone, for sending your, your uh, emails in. I think we're good to go on that. Trivia is so fun. We're breaking the internet. Yeah, this is great. The internet can't handle oh. All right, so if everyone is ready, I am going to share my screen here. Uh, Boom. All right. This is. Oh, yeah. Now we're ready. Round two coming at you. Yeah, so we'll quickly go through the answers. Um, and then again, everyone, if you want with the answers, it'd be great if you could just post your scores in the comments and see how everyone's doing. And so keep, keep track of your scores um, at home as well. So this is the first one and the photo was burnt coat head. So number one was burnt coat head. One of our favorite places to explore. Oh, One of these man, days, you're gonna get to and you're going to play a little concert in the caves there. Oh, yeah. No. And that, I mean, we should really do that, actually, because there's amazing caves. <laughs> if you haven't taken the time to drive out through Noel or um, Chevery to the shoreline there to Burncoat Head, definitely go do that. This definitely should be on your to do list once we're allowed out. Yeah, just not right now. Uh, number two, Cape Door, uh, Odin Advocate Harbor. Beautiful spot. One of our favorites. Um, Shout out to uh, our boy Darcy, who runs tours, Advocate Boat Tours, Advocate Harbor Boat Tours, right from, and he, you can actually stay in those little places there, which is really cool. Does Darcy still come cookie breakfast? Oh, he would cook. Yes, I think so. I'm pretty sure. I, I, was, I was on their website not too long ago and it said that you still do. So, yeah, oh, man, that breakfast. Uh, this one was Lewisburg. So, number three, Lewisburg Lighthouse. You can see Lewisburg, the fortress in the background. If you're watch, looking on something big enough, perhaps, um, but this is the lighthouse. Up in Lewisburg, Louisburg. Number four, the Sambro Lighthouse, the oldest lighthouse in North America. Right, Jan? Oldest functional lighthouses. Right. Because okay. I think Lewisburg was older, but it got rebuilt. Yeah. And our favorite town, of course, the town of Canso in the background. Oh my goodness, I missed that place. And we are paddling from the Grassy Islands uh, National Historic Site, which again, if you haven't been there, there's a boat that takes you out in the summer. It's free, it's awesome. Another reason to visit the town of Canso. That and Stanfest, of course, being number one. That so this is wonderful people who live there year round. Oh my goodness. Buzz and Emily, shout out to the Lumstons. Uh, Kayak Nova Scotia wants to know that, or told us that we will get shut off after 40 minutes. We will not, we've got the uh, upgraded cat, my friend. Scattery Island was the answer to number six. Um, oh, so- Let me know in the comments if anybody's ever been out there. Yeah, and I'll just go back. Uh, this, so the, this was actually a ship that was being towed. This, this ship here was being towed to be destroyed and the, and the rope broke and it went over and got stuck on Scattery. It's just off the coast, of course, of Cape Breton. Um, and they removed it. So anyway, staying in Cape Breton, White Point. Like I said, that is uh, Sugarloaf in the background, up in the Aspie Bay area. So beautiful up there. Tell everybody how windy it was when we were there last. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, that was insane. Adam, Adam Hill was there, and our boy Tim Mumbercat. They, it was great. We almost blew off. Number eight, Franey Mountain. We love Cape Breton. This is a beautiful hike looking at Inganish in the background. Number nine, might, might have been a little tricky one if you haven't been there, obviously, but this is Coochipaquack National Park in New Brunswick. Just oh, an, 
on on our way to Kelly's Beach. It's yeah, unreal spot. Unreal. Not to mention of Brad Say's amazing bandana. Yeah, yeah, rock star Brad. Wintertime fest. They have great cross country skiing in the wintertime. Yes. Number ten, which for most people, like I said, maybe easy, maybe not. Maybe you're learning something. This is Cape Chignecto Provincial Park. Um, you can see the three sisters down the bottom left there. Beautiful spot. Number 11, our health card photo is Kejimakujik Seaside Adjunct. Number 12, Mahone Bay, the famous churches of Mahone Bay. Number 13, a familiar site, but maybe not a familiar angle. It is McNabb's Island, the McNabb's Island Lighthouse. And uh, trivia night out there. Well, I'll go hang out McNabb's and have some trivia. People, that would be great. It's a good idea. You should see the work they're doing. If anyone hasn't seen, they're uh, redoing the, the tea house. Have you seen any of the photos, guys? Yeah, absolutely. Then, yeah. You know, this has been a dream of theirs for a long time. Now that's becoming an interpretive center and, you know, a place to be able to hang out. If you've never been to McNabb's Island, this has got, like, as soon as we're back to, to kind of real life here, I hope you put it at the top of your list because it's really amazing. It's so close. Yeah, it's amazing. Speaking of amazing, Borgles Island, which is part of the 100 Wild. So if you wrote Borgles Island amazing full points if you wrote 100 wild islands we'll still give you full points um if you wrote like eastern shore you don't get them unfortunately but 100 wild islands of course protected by the nova scotia nature trust um just an absolute gem of a spot another one of those places that you can you can go from uh, murphy's campground um they do boat tours you can take a kayak out there from or buds at coastal adventures you can even sail out there I think it's Whaleboat Tours that does that, those boys. And number 15, the coat of arms, it was a Kingfisher. Kingfisher was the answer. Um, there we go. So again, let us know in the comments what you got for correct answers. Yep. And uh, yeah, let's Jason move on. Wins, we got one. Yeah, it is, does anybody need me to look back at all or show anything else? Am I going way too slow? Am I going too fast? I feel like I'm going too slow, but I, uh, it's hard to tell. Hey, we're all on an adventure here together right now. Yeah. Really, this has never been done before. <laughs> World first. All right. All right. Good first round, everybody. Six from Rebecca Thomas. Moose Bay team at nine. Good job. Larry and Kevin Martin, two. Taylor, eight. Peter five, Reb got two, Renee got 10, 10 leading. Oh, system. Renee. There's two 10, somebody else got a 10. Yes. Whoever N is got a 10. Nine out of 15, five out of 15. One out of 15, not originally. So hopefully Jade, you learned something. Nine out of 10 boys, Matt, Noah, come on, pull it together. I'm leaning on you here in the next round. Uh, I don't see anything from Adam Cornick here. Oh, zero, Adam. Yeah, right. That can't be true. Half those photos are yours. <laughs> so you guys uh, can share your. Jason Quinn says he has eleven. That might be the the record. Yeah, I think eleven is the highest. All right. Well, who's up next? Who's got round two? Dave. Guy, Mr. Dave Green coming at you. Doing hot and heavy. Love it. All right, I'm gonna put my video off. Oh, kind of late this 3.5 somehow. Dave, you keep looking. You get. Do you have pants on now? No, of course not. <laughs> no, I got my Fox Line uh, underwear on. Is that uh, your Flintstones outfit? This is it, man? Bam, bam. Such a legend. Okay. Uh, so I'm doing a thing here. Let me get it together. Oh, I, I, the next one trying to make some sort of excuse, like he didn't participate in that round. Didn't take part in that round. What are, you, what are you still doing school with your kids, Adam? <clears throat> doing a thing. Uh, actually, Liam, Adam's son, would crush this, I'm sure. What is it? Kyle Blades at a 3.5. What is that? I know. I'm curious to know. Can't wait to read what his answers were. All right. 
Bees for exploration. Trivia round number two. Is everybody ready to go out there? All the uh, night of adventures ready to have a go at this uh, fantastic uh, second round of trivia. I'm really going to test some knowledge, expose you to some fantastic people and some really great trips that have been that have happened in the recent past and long distance and you're going to learn all about it. Ready? Go. I'm ready. Here we go. Here we go. Question number one. A nice fade. That was a sweet, that slow. Was a smooth fade. Okay. Yeah. I worked on that all morning. Really good transition. Oh, thank you. Thank you. This explorer once famously printed a wanted ad as follows Men wanted for hazardous journey, small wage, bitter cold, long months of complete darkness, constant danger and doubtful return, honor and recognition in case of success. This famous explorer was A, Sir Edmund Hillary, B, Sir Ernest Shackleton, C, Jacques Cousteau, or D, Jan Sebastian Lapierre. This is a dead giveaway. You know I would make such an ad. Who would put out such an ad? Looking for men. I would, I would, I would. Doubtful. <laughs> you say I'm not a man stacked up against some of these legendary explorers? Hey. Right. Next okay. question. I'd say, you know, I'm a little bit Jacques Cousteau. Yeah, right. Next question. Buckle like up. Anyway. Buckle up. Me. Question two. Lynn Hill revolutionized climbing. She became the first person ever to do what? A, first person to climb a 5.15. Did Lynn Hill, B, become the first person to free climb the nose on El Capitan? C, did Lynn Hill become the first person to climb a V14 in the bouldering scale? Or D, did Lynn Hill invent the Porta Ledge? Porta Ledge is like a kind of like a fake ground ledge thing that you hang off of a cliff and sleep in if you're doing like a multi pitch ascent of a face that takes longer than one entire day and you need to sleep somewhere. You'd sleep on a Porta Ledge. It'd be such a crazy experience to do that. Oh, it'd be incredible. You know where those people poop, right? Off the edge. Ding, ding, ding. How many people do you think have been shat on in the course of people down there climbing uh, Yosemite? This question was, what did Lynn Hill do first? Yeah. Uh, probably, probably a few. All right. All right. Good question. I, I didn't know the answer to this, so that was fun. All right. Question number three. The Soviet Union stunned the world on November 3rd, 1957 with the launch of Sputnik 2. On board was an animal named Leica, whom became the first animal to orbit the Earth in a spacecraft. Leica was a... A dog. Leica, B, was a guinea pig. Uh, the first animal to orbit the planet in a spacecraft was C, a monkey. Or Leica was D, a cat. What do you think? What do you think the I first really animal the guinea pig. to go all the way around? What would logistically be reasonable to put into a spacecraft and go around the world? which in scientific terms we call orbiting. Yeah. All right, the comments have slowed down out there. I think everyone's, uh, their brains are rattled. What do you think? I think they're just focusing. I think you're, you know, you're, you're testing their, their brains. Hopefully they're not Googling things. Mm, hopefully they're not Googling things. Testing people's honesty, I love it. All right. Good one. Good question. All right. Ooh. Question number four. Look at that mountain. It's beautiful. The world's second highest mountain is known to be the most difficult and dangerous to climb. 
What is its name? The world's second highest mountain is named Annapurna. It is B, K2, C, Lhotse, or D, Manaslu. This is the world's second highest mountain. We all know that Mount Everest is the, uh, the tallest one. It is the biggest, tallest mountain that we have on planet Earth. Um, but it's, it's not actually the most dangerous or difficult technically to climb. And the second highest mountain on Earth is often referred to as the most dangerous and difficult mountain to get to the top of and back down safely. I thought this was the Matterhorn when I first saw it, the photo. Yeah, you could, yeah, it looks Matterhorn-ish. Yeah. yeah. Except about 10,000 feet bigger. How big is the Matterhorn? I'm going to find out. Hold on here. Matterhorn's pretty big. Yeah, it's good. Is it in Did the 20,000s though? Oh, no. When I was there years ago, I think the person told me that they usually have around 500 people climb it every year. Is that true? Or is it too many? No. Uh, that's probably, I think that's what it is, 500 a year. I'll go with that. More people. So it's uh, 14,000 feet tall, the Matterhorn, okay. which uh, is almost half, right? Yeah, that's Everest, cool. Everest is what, 29,000 feet, Dave? Something like that. Uh, yep, yeah, yeah, and change. So there you go. Matterhorn's almost half the size. Crazy. Crazy. Okay. Uh, Chris. There we go. The live. We're good, Dave. Okay. Number five. Freya Hoffmeister has already circumnavigated in a sea kayak. She's already circumnavigated Ireland, Iceland, Australia, New Zealand, and South America. What is her next big challenge? Like, like she's already sea kayaked around Australia and South America. Like no joke, for real. And New Zealand and Ireland and Iceland. What's up next for her, like honestly? Honestly, what could it possibly be? Is uh, Freya going to see kayak around A, Africa, B, Europe, C, Antarctica, or D, North America? This is such a, like a teacher kind of question. Like you're just trying to teach us things. I love it. Yeah. And this, the, actually, the, her plan, she's, it's, it's a, mul actually, any of those four options would take multiple years to pass around. It's a Dave, how do you circumnavigate Europe exactly? Like I get North America and Antarctica, but like how we do you get, go about circumnavigating Europe? We get into the Volga through uh, the Caspian Sea one way or another, you? up or down and through the locks up to uh, St. Petersburg, couldn't you? I mean, I guess so. Yeah, 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 absolutely. A multi, these are all multi, multi year trips and she's already started it actually. She's already taken off a huge chunk of the first stage of this next cre incredible trip. Unreal. She's All right. All right. Rita Hoffmeister, incredible, incredible human being. Question number six. World-renowned explorers Mike Horn and Björg Oslin recently completed a 87-day full crossing of what? Summer's cold. I can tell. Oh, cool. And these two, they have lots of experience together. They've done all kinds of things. Borg Oslin is, is the leading expert in polar travel in the world. He's, he's accomplished more than probably anybody else living. The guy's, it's amazing. It's amazing. And Mike Horn's up there. Too. Anyways, the question is, what did they recently complete? Took them 87 days. Did they cross the Arctic via the North Pole? Did they be cross Antarctica via the South Pole? Did they... Do a full north-south traverse of Greenland, or did they cross the Canadian tundra uh, west to east through the Northwest Territories in Nunavut? Holy crap, they're all crazy. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's four <laughs> options of insane. Yeah. Oh, man. They're all legitimate expeditions. Yeah, yeah that's a hard right. And all things that have been done in recent years. And these two 
Yeah, these two just completed one this year, which is pretty amazing to follow along. Oh, how old are they, Dave? These gentlemen? Yeah, the one gentleman looks like he's, you know. Oh, yeah, they're both in their 50s. Yeah, unreal. Yeah. And for an endurance yeah, sports like this, for endurance trips like this or endurance sports like this, generally people who are at their prime are in their 40s or 50s. That's the time to, to be out there and doing it. That's when you have the most patience, I think, is one of the biggest virtues. Okay, good one. All right. All right. Question number six. Seven, seven. Yeah, we're moving along. The Talisker Atlantic Rowing Challenge happens every year. What was the 2019 winning team's time? Now, this is what I just want to use your common sense, a little bit of like, you know, they rode 4,800 kilometers across the Atlantic Ocean from the Canary Islands to Antigua. 4,800 kilometers, 3,000 nautical miles. As a team of four, did it A, take them 28 days? Did it B, take them 32 days? Oh God. Did it C, take them 35 days? Or did it D, take them 16 days? Any of those is crazy. 4,800 kilometers in 32 days, that's still insane. Did it, did it fast? It'd be 16 days, is it? That's crazy. Yeah. They're all crazy. You're right. Is that them? Is that the team there that won? It is not. No. No, but it happens every year. In this past year, there was over 100 racers. There's 34 teams from around the world. Um, yeah, the winning team, you'll find out how fast they did it. The, all the people that finished, I mean, of the 34 teams, 22 of them finished. The longest was a, uh, a woman who rode solo, had her rudder, her um, auto navigation systems fail on her and she had to oar and rudder the boat by herself, but it took her uh, close to 90 days, but she still did it. All right. Cool, nice. All right, question number eight. The well-known song by the Tragically Hip, Looking for a Place to Happen, on the album Fully Completely, was inspired by who? A, Queen Elizabeth, B, The Voyagers, C, Pierre Trudeau, or D, Gordon Lightfoot. Where would go? Where would go? I love it. I wonder if uh, we'll have any copyright issues now with the people. <laughs> Unlicensed music. Yeah, I'll take that, Dan. <laughs> And uh, I learned something from this question. All right. I don't know that. All right. You don't want to get everybody too fired up, right? They got to sit there and do trivia. Oh, man. We should just do it. A tragically hip adventure trivia night. Just hip questions. Yeah. Brent Hubner. Brent Hubner's here? He just wrote the answer. Don't be giving the answers away. Oh, Brent Hubner, I love you. Oh, all right. Question number nine. Jean Ami Figuramana, aka DJ Jab Big recently rode across Canada on a fixed speed or single speed bicycle. What is his next big endeavor? Now, jean Ami came from, was born and raised in Rwanda, came to Canada as a uh, 10 or 12 year old child with his family, um, has settled in Montreal and works there as a DJ and a musician. Um, but he also has spent time as a mail courier 
uh, has obviously now spent quite a bit of time on a bicycle. Uh, he recently rode his bike across Canada on a fixed speed bike, like, and I mean all the way across. I mean like mm. to Vancouver and then all the way north to Tuk Tuk Tuk. Um, did he is his next endeavor a to cycle the Tour de Afrique, which is a annual cycling event that happens from the length of of Africa from Egypt to Cairo or vice versa. They switch it up each year. Is it B to cycle the Americas? So to continue his route there from Vancouver and head south all the way to Ushuaia. Is it C to cycle around the world? Or is it D to set a 24 hour distance record? Good question, cool. There's a, for those listening, there's the Banff Mountain Film Festival has released a whole whack of uh, films for the last uh, last year's tour, which is super cool. It's on their website. I highly recommend you go check it out. Um, this documentary, I forget what it's called, but it is one of the dozen or so videos they've released. Uh, it's only like six minutes long. Uh, it's super cool. And uh, he seems like a rad dude. So yeah. I highly recommend checking that video out. Yeah. Along with the other ones too that are on there because it's pretty sweet that you can watch them. Yeah, they're very well done. Uh, Dave, what's the current record for the 24 hour distance by cycle? It is um, really, really, really far. <laughs> a lot further than I could ride. Holy shit, it's 903 kilometers. That's crazy. Marco Balo of Slovenia. Interesting. Wow. That's crazy. Hear that, John Mayo? 903 kilometers. 24 hours. <laughs> wow. All right, next, next question. Good question. Question number 10. Courtney DeWalter is the definition of badass. In 2017, she finished an ultra ma running marathon in Moab after two days, nine hours, and 59 minutes. She beat the second place person, which was a dude, uh, by 10 hours. How many miles long was this race that took her two days, nine hours, and 59 minutes to complete? Was this race A, 100 miles, B, 240 miles, C, 300 miles, or D, 340 miles? Yes, she did run one of those distances in two days, nine hours, and 59 minutes. So crazy. I listened to the, she was on Joe Rogan. Yeah, she was on Joe Rogan podcast, and it, she said she slept two times. One of them was for 20 minutes, and one of them was for one minute. Um, <coughs> and she hallucinated. She thought she heard, like, a little boy playing the violin at some point, which obviously wasn't the case. Uh, yeah, she's super cool. Very cool. If you if you want to know more, I highly recommend googling her name with Joe Rogan and listening to the podcast. It's it's pretty it's pretty amazing. Incredible. Oh, she's a badass at the first order. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Question number eleven. This company, which was incorporated in sixteen seventy was critical in the redevelopment of Canada through the fur trade. It was A, Frenchies, B, the Hudson's Bay Company, C, the Northwest Company, or D, the Company of Adventures. I thought this was really actually gonna be an easy question, but now that I'm reading it out to a hundred people, oh, well, oh, you could have put in, it could have been a little easier for you. No, that's good. That's good though. I think it's kind of a gimme. I think you should get it. I mean, yeah, I think this is a pretty. You got this one. I think you got this one. Yeah. All right. Good. Good question. All right. Here we go. Here we go. We love it. Twelve. Okay. I've got another song here for you, and I just want you to write down the location Stan Rogers is singing about. What? Oh, oh nearly you gave it away. How am I gonna do this now? Well, that was a good that was a good hint, I think. Uh, that was a good hint. <laughs> for 
Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, that might have been freebie. That's a free one. Who cares? It was uh, good. For those of you who are listening, it is not the Orient. I think for those of you who know it already know it. And if you don't know it, then uh, you have some research to do. Yeah, just go listen to the Stan Rogers album if you haven't heard this one before. Uh, I don't think anybody in Canso knows the answer to this. No, I don't think so. Yeah. They wouldn't know. We're scrambling right now. Yeah. It, it, it could actually be the name of the album as well. So just leave it at that. He actually, Stan didn't have all that many albums, but he did write an album for every region of Canada, uh, which is kind of interesting. He's very Canadian. You don't know, you need to know Stan. Very young when he died, only 33 years old, right? Right. He said. Okay. Question number 13. Ending in 1898 and taking over three years, this Nova Scotian from Briar Island to boot became the first person to sail single handedly around the world. Now, for people listening, Dave, they might dispute this because uh, Joshua Slocum uh, is refuted to be from Mount Henley, just up the way from Briar Island, but did leave from Briar Island. Mm -hmm. I was saying the same thing and then was reminded by a few folks just the other day when I made the same claim. Now, I, I can't verify that either way, but for those people who do know, perhaps they could let us know. That's a very you, good point, Jim. You just said the answer. <laughs> Good job. You gotta listen yeah. carefully. Yeah. Uh, this guy here, this guy pictured here, and that actually might not be him either, but this guy here, there's a dude from Nova Scotia who sailed single handedly around the world, uh, ending in 1898, uh, and became the first person to do so. And that is badass. The definition of Night of Adventure. Yep. Question number 14. Oh, I gave you options. Look at that. Yeah, um, you're kind. We're just going to move on. That's OK. <laughs> <laughs> we're just going to move on. Question number 14. Sarah McNair Landry is also super badass. When she turned 18, she joined an unsupported expedition a skiing expedition to the South Pole. A year later, she dog sledded to the North Pole, becoming the youngest person to reach both North and South Poles. She has been the National Geographic Adventurer of the Year twice. That's, that's pretty impressive. Uh, how many times has Sarah crossed the Greenland ice cap? Has Sarah crossed the Greenland ice cap three times, 10 times, 25 times, or has she crossed the Greenland ice cap five times? I hope it's 25 times. It's impressive, no matter what, because she's done so many things. It really is amazing. Her and now, her brother. Dog sledding every time she's doing this, Dave. What's that? Is she a dog sledder? Is that her main mode of transport? Is she one of these people throwing the kite up and skiing across? How's she doing it? She's a kite. She's a kiter. She does yeah. a lot of kiting. Her and her brother Eric um, kited the Northwest Passage from Tuktoyaktuk to Pond Inlet in eighty-five days. Holy shit! Yeah. Have her look on a map if you want to have a, a scope of how long of a distance that is. That's crazy. It's not right now. Okay, question number 15, the last one for the round. I appreciate everybody's patience. In 1972, Sylvia Cook answered an ad in the New York Times from a gentleman named John Fairfax. They later fell in love. Uh, and they became the first people to row across the Pacific Ocean, the Pacific Ocean from San Francisco to Australia. People have done it since, it's a thing. How many days did it take them? 145 days, 
213 days. In 1972, they rode across the Pacific Ocean. Did it C, take them 299 days? Or did it D, take them 363 days? Like this is the Pacific Ocean, like it, it's, it's really big. And they went actually from like mainland North America to mainland Australia. They didn't stop on the islands. They didn't like resupply, like they did the whole thing. And there's been a couple other people who've done it since. It's not like a super popular thing to go do, but like, it's definitely a thing. There's a Russian dude, Freder. Uh, he's actually done it twice. He's the only person to do it in both directions. He went from South America to Australia and then he went from Tasmania back to Chile recently. He did that last year. That's a crazy trip. Being that down south, like from Tasmania all the way out to Chile, like that must have been crazy weather. It's crazy. And this guy too, uh, this Russian guy, uh, Feder, he is, it's, it's like a multi-year expedition thing. And whenever things clear up, he's going to put in at his, where he took out in Chile on this last one. And he's going to ro continue rowing to South Africa and then at a later date, he's going to row across the Indian Ocean from South Africa back to Tasmania, ending a circumnavigation of the Southern Oceans around the world. Uh, but that has nothing to do with this question. How long did it take Sylvia Cook and John Fairfax to row across the Pacific Ocean in 1972? Six million days. All right. Uh, I just got a Rebecca. Thomas just messaged and said, false, the Polynesian people populated all over the Pacific and traded with folks in Alaska and the West Coast. And she learned that in Hawaii. Uh, she's right on the money. Absolutely. They made their way all the way. Some people say from Madagascar is the, some of the origins of the Polynesian people made their way all across the Indian Ocean, the Pacific Ocean, uh, their treasured sweet potato, the Kumra that they use for a staple of their diet came from South America. Super cool. Absolutely correct. Thank you, Rebecca. Can you guys show your faces, Jan? And could everybody submit their answers once again? Oh, there we go. We're back. We're back. Um, yeah, so submit your answers. Same thing, info, or sorry, not info. I guess we have a special one, trivia at afeeradventure.ca. Um, while we're back on the screen, I want to show people Kind of a couple things they're playing for. This is the really cool survival. Do you, uh, do you want your face to go big? Uh, oh yeah, right. Yeah, doesn't uh, doesn't matter. There you go. So yeah, you're in. From uh, VSSL, which is super cool. Um, North Face. It's got a compass on it. When you open this thing up, it literally has like everything you would need survival kit for an adventure. It's really neat just full of things, full of treasures. So can you put your camera down so we can see it a bit more. Yeah, that's it. There you go. Yeah, so it's just full of all the things you need for an adventure. Um, yeah, it's awesome. It's one of the things you can just have with you when you go. A flashlight, compass, matches, lights, the whole kit and caboodle, little SOS pad. Um, yeah, really, really neat. Um, so that's one thing you're playing for, of course. Our buds at North Brewing, we're giving away two four packs from them. Got some other stuff from North Face. Got a Wicked Yeti mug. We'll give away. We got some of these awesome uh, wraps that you wrap your food in, beeswax. Some cool stickers. Got some cool If Adventure stickers too. Oh, the beavers. Beavers. The Adventure Beavers. Nice. Uh, uh, some notepads here from North Face to journal during these times. Cool. Water bottle. <laughs> Your outfit is amazing, man. Every time I look over at you, it just makes me laugh. It's great. All right, so everyone's emailing in. We'll give people another minute or two here and get going with round three. Uh, Great job on putting this together, boys. This is tons of fun. Uh, folks, the third round. I don't think it's going to be quite as hard as Dave's questions. <laughs> I think Jan's going to go a bit easier on you. I'm going to go a bit easier on you. But the thing is, all these people that you highlight, man, like, you know, they're so incredible, the things that they're doing. And, you know, part of Night of Adventure, if you've never been to a Night of Adventure, 
Dave often brings up these kinds of folks, but we have these kinds of people who are living amongst us and they come and present too. So if you've never been to Night of Adventure, I highly recommend that you do come. Um, Dave, do you want to give any update there about Night of Adventure, anything going on? Well, we're going to have to wait and see what happens with the state of the world right now. Um, but in, in the future, there will be more Nights of Adventure. And I'm always looking for people who have done some type of human powered expedition or long trip and that would want to share some stories. Um, in the future, like we're lined up, we were going to do one called the Night of Misadventure. So there will be a Night of Misadventure in the future where my friends and I share stories of times we mess things up or learn through error, which is pretty much how we learn everything. A lot uh, of you think we could, I mean, there's a chance we could almost do that on this. Yeah, look, if there's an appetite for that, that'd be tons of fun. I'd love to do a night of misadventure online. Yeah, just get to like try to find like five or six people who have some cool stories and call them up one at a time and uh, have a chat. That'd be kind of cool. I'd be down. That would be a great time. Let me think about it. Um, I have gotten a whole bunch of emails. We'll do it one more minute. And then I think, Jane, you're up, bud, the brown three. Also, I should mention, I should mention that Night of Adventure has the Adventure Grant, which is currently live. It is currently still active. We're not sure how it's going to play out, but you should probably still apply. If oh, you yeah. have the dream trip in mind and you're going to go, not that I can tell you to do, just, just you know, I'll stop right there. But you, you, you know what I'm saying? Still alive. You should still apply. We still want to know what your dreams and ideas are. Oh, we're still gonna, yeah, we're still gonna wow. give them away. We got, we got the two thousand bucks to give away. Yeah, for people to go have adventures whenever that is, uh, you know, whenever it's safe to do so. So, this is a good time when you're sitting around, think of what you want to do, any adventures you want to go on, and uh, yeah. what is all yours? It's pretty it's simple. Also, it's also, the family event out there too. You can submit a piece of creativity, art form, poetry, song, picture um, that a child in your family has made. Um, and submit that through A for Adventure as well. And we're giving out a fantastic package to a dream trip here in Nova Scotia. Yeah, that's gonna be sweet. And we've got a lot of really good entries from that. And we're still, it's still open for another week, I think, or a week or two, a couple weeks, I think. So get your ideas in for that. And yeah. How you feeling, Jane? You ready to go? Oh, buddy, I'm raring to go. Awesome. Folks, this is round three. So I'm gonna share up my screen here. And here we go for round three. Now I kind of chose a smorkage board of fun, different questions here, things that I'm stoked on. Uh, can you see that now there boys? Good man, yeah. All right, so we're getting started with one of my favorite places here in Nova Scotia and uh, in New Brunswick. I guess Maine would be involved with this too. This is the, well, the Bay of Fundy. So this is question one, round three. Each day, blank tons of seawater, and this is more than all of the water in all of the worlds and lakes in the world combined. It flows in and out of the Bay of Fundy. How much water are we talking about here? Is it A, 100 million tons? Is it B, 500 million tons? Is it C, 220 billion tons, or D, 320 billion tons of water? Now imagine, right, all of the water from all of the rivers in all of the world. That is a hell of a lot of water. Oh, uh, Dave points out that we didn't do the answers for round two. Oh, yeah, right, 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 right. Answers. Whoops. Yeah. We were so excited to get into round three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Let's backtrack. Come on, Dave. Okay, we're going to backtrack. I'm going to stop sharing now. But think about that first question. <laughs> There's a lot of water. There's a lot of water. This is your chance to get onto Google map and look. You're like, how much water is it? I want to know. All right, Dave, do your answers. Can you see that? I can do it for you if you, if you close it up. Are you good, Dave? Yeah. Uh, There's uh, Dave. I got it. I got it. I got it. Oh, no, I don't. No, you don't. Want me to do it? Yeah. Okay. Stop sharing. There you go. They're up. Is that me? That's you. I do that. 
Yeah. yeah. Round right. two answers. The Just person who sent out the most ridiculous want ad of all time, safe return doubtful, was actually B, for Ernest Shackleton. And not only did they have a safe return, but he returned every single person alive and doing fairly well. Crazy. Believe it or not, on the boat when they left, uh, I think they left from, um, from New Zealand, right? And, and uh, there was a stowaway in their boat that they didn't find until they're almost in Antarctica. Yeah, and they found they're like, oh, well, we're not turning around now. And that guy survived too. Anyways, question number two. What a drag to be that guy. You think you're going somewhere is awesome and then you go through like the craziest journey of your lifetime. Right? Amazing. Lynn Hill became the first ever to free climb the nose on El Capitan, um, which was quite, quite the feat really for anybody at any time, but she became the first person ever to do it. Um, it's a certain specific feature on, on El Capitan and she free climbed it. So without ropes or any holds or anything like that, it's just her hanging out. Side of the cliff. It is an insane accomplishment to do that free climb is just I mean I, I cannot even begin to understand how a person could do that so kudos to her yeah it's, that's unreal that's the one that Alex Honnold just did the whole thing right he did the entire face of it yeah we just watched that movie free solo crazy. Hannah and I watched it my daughter the other night it, again just crazy Crazy. Question number three. Um, um, Sputnik 2 went up into space and, and went around the world. It orbited the planet. And the animal that was inside was, in fact, a dog. It was not this dog pictured. This is my buddy's dog, Cairo. But um, mm -hmm. it, it was, in fact, a dog. I thought I recognized Cairo. Cairo. So the first mammal to orbit the Earth was, in fact, a dog. It's our best friend. Isn't that cute? I have a dog. Look. Anyways, to the point, uh, number four. The second highest mountain on the planet after Mount Everest is in fact K2. K2 is located in, it's technically in India, but Pakistan took it over. Uh, so it need permits, it's actually in India. Uh, not a lot of people attempt it. It's okay. Second highest mountain in the world, K2. Question number five, Frida Hoffmeister is currently attempting to circumnavigate North America. She has already left um, from Panama and she came all the way up the west coast of Central America. Uh, she did a crossing of the Baja uh, Bay over to the Baja Peninsula. She rounded it, did all of California, all of Vancouver, all of Alaska and finished for the year up in Nome. So she's already done the whole west side of North America. Um, I think next year, whenever we're allowed to go anywhere, she's going to continue from there, and her plan is to do the Northwest Passage next. Yeah. So keep your eyes on this woman here, because it's it's beyond words, really. Freya. Uh, question number six. Uh, Eric, or not Eric Horn, I had lived with a guy in university named Eric Horn. Uh, Mike Horn and Bjorg Iceland, Oslin. Um, recently completed an 87 day expedition um, across the Arctic via the North Pole. Uh, they did it almost entirely in the dark. Uh, the sun didn't really rise for them at all. Um, they didn't have any resupplies whatsoever. They had to contend with open water. They had to swim across. It was really kind of nightmarish. Kind of swim? They were swimming across what? Uh, open water leads. So, in places where the ice doesn't freeze properly, because they are. 100% entirely on walking on frozen sea ice. Wow. So is that wetsuits that they're wearing, Dave, down the, the lower left corner? Yeah, they'd be wearing full body immersion suits. Yeah. Shit. Yeah, and the picture on the top, you can see the rafts. They took like pack rafts with them that they would uh, get it into and paddle across the really long open water leads. Wow. That's crazy. Next level, super badass. Question number seven. Um, the Talisker Atlantic Rowing Challenge happens every year. Um, it's 4,800 kilometers long or 3,000 nautical miles. And the winning team this year, 2019, it's not the world record, but last year, uh, rode across in 32 days. 
Wow. That is really, really fast. So on a, a, a team of four, you work on a two hour shifts. So you're two hours rowing and then you have two hours off. But that's still like 150 kilometers or something a day, isn't it? Yeah, they were really hauling ass. Jesus. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, I'm still looking for a partner if anybody, anybody wants to do this with me in two years, three years, whatever. Uh, I still, I need, I need somebody to go with me. It's, you know, it's just... Are you going to do this race? I mean, we've talked about this. It'd be safer with somebody else. So like, you know, Brad Farquhar says he wants to do it. You still out there, bud? Brad, Brad would, you know Brad will do it. Just sign him up. He'll do it. Just sign him up without even telling him. Right? You really should just do that. Just sign him up. Be like, hey, Brad, in two years on July 1st, we're doing this. He'll be like, okay. Okay. This is I think we just signed him up for him. Question number eight. The tragically hip looking for a place to happen from fully completely was inspired by the Voyager. Yeah. Our boy Brent out there said that one in the, uh, in the chat. So I think everyone got that one. Oh yeah. <laughs> Thanks Brenty. All right, question number nine. Um, DJ Jab Big uh, from Montreal is his next big project is to cycle around the world. So on a fixed gear bike. Around the on a fixed gear bike, a single speed Why bike. fixed gear? Does he have some particular love for fixed gear bikes? Because he was a mail courier. Yeah. Yeah. He uh, in that little documentary, I think it touched on that. I think he because I was wondering the same thing. I'm a, I have my opinions on fixed gear bikes. I don't really understand them. Um, but uh, he, yeah, he, he, that's how he learned how to ride a bike was on a fixed gear. And um, he decided that he was going to, I forget. There was a reason. I think there was a reason. Why not? The homage to the they make them. carriers out there. Yeah, I think it might've been something like that. Yeah. Anyways, he's a badass dude and uh, super yeah. cool around the world. I did, that's crazy. It's a thing. I mean, you got to get around the oceans and all, but still you can't technically, you could technically, people do, there's, there's a classification that says what you have to do in order to be qualified to have ridden your bike around the world. So yeah, it's, it's kind of the thing, but you know, it's a thing. It's a real thing. Question number 10, Courtney DeWalter um, completed the Moab 240. 240 miles she ran in two days, nine hours and 59 minutes, beating all of the other competitors. Um, second place coming in 10 hours behind her. That's crazy too. All of these are crazy, but that's, I mean, like Chris said, listen to the Joe Rogan interview with her. She is. I love my favorite part is when Joe Rogan starts to try to geek out on nutrition and she's like, no, I just eat nachos. I eat whatever I want. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. He's so shocked. He's like, what? You don't have like a crazy regimen diet. And she's like, no, I, I run so I can eat whatever I want. That's why I run. Amazing. Question 11. Um, it was the Hudson's Bay Company, which was incorporated in 1670. The Hudson's Bay Company. Who's got a Hudson Bay blanket out there? I have three of them. Okay, question number 12. What yeah. is the name of the location that Stan Rogers singing about? It's the name of the album too. He's singing about the Northwest Passage. Should have had, uh, the question should have been, what song did Jan and, uh, <laughs> what song did, did uh, Jan sing? How many times do you figure you sang that song on the way to Sable Island? Um, I mean, it's a long song, so we could never remember the words all the way, but Graham and I sang that song hundreds of times it, leading up to it, and I'd say dozens and dozens and dozens of times all the way out there. Yeah. Because it's an epic song, oh my gosh. I mean, you know, I feel like it's a second national anthem, you know? It's like, oh, Canada. Okay, question 13. Um, the gentleman who single-handedly sailed around uh, the world, um, ending, ending in 1898, 
Uh, the gentleman's name was Joshua Slocum. Joshua Slocum, I think I think most people got that one, I hope. But now you know, it's a little piece of Nova Scotian history. That's yeah, I think, very important. Question 14, Sarah McNair Landry, um, who's done a lot of really incredible things. She has been across the Greenland ice cap five times. Wow. Five times. Um, I know she's been to the South Pole like at, at least three times. Um, and most recently, this past winter, her and her boyfriend, uh, Eric Boomer, who's a really famous whitewater kayaker, they led a private trip. So they were the guides for the client, clients of some kind. And they did a, a ski trip uh, that was 90 days long from the coast of Antarctica to the point of inaccessibility. So that is the point that is the furthest away from ocean um, on the continental Antarctica. And it's an actual place. And believe it or not, at this place is a bust of Lenin. The Russians went there in the 50s, the 50s, and put a bust of Lenin facing towards Russia. It's the only thing that's there. Weird. But they went there. Our ad is saying sociable. <laughs> Woo! Okay, last question, question 15. Uh, Sylvia Cook and John Fairfax rode across the Pacific Ocean from San Francisco to Australia in ending in 1972. It took them 363 days. Wow. Woo! Well, it's a lot of days. That's a whole year. They're very much in love by the end, too. They got married and was that's, 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 that's remarkable, actually, that they yeah. would even tolerate each other. I guess it's got to go one of two ways, though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know. All right, Jainer, you're up, bud. Okay. So, good. Before, I guess as we're transitioning over to Jan, what did everybody get? Please put your marks in the comments. We want to know what you had that round. And we're back. Let's hear from you folks about what you... 12... Out of 15, Renee. Out of 15. Renee, Levangi, and Colin. Love you is for winning. Wow. 11, 5, 9, 7, Moose Bait, 9. I guess we did give them six. We gave a couple answers away, but Noah, 5 out of 15. David, what? Colin, 10. Matt Balcom, 5. Matt and Noah. Rebecca and Chris at seven. Cornick at seven. Cornick, I can't believe you didn't know the tragically hip one. Come on. Yeah, come on, bud. Uh, 11. Of course here. Sarah Miller says 11 out of 15 if MB wasn't on the team. <laughs> 7 out of 15 for Jay. Kayak Nova Scotia, 12. Ooh, nice. Fun. Is that actually Kayak Nova Scotia or is that Carl? Probably Carl. Yeah. Carl's Carl? a smart guy. Carl is... Nova Scotia kayaking. Uh, Sam Goss, eight out of 15. Awesome crew. Nice work, Blades. Sweet. Awesome. Good job, everybody. All right. I'm crushing it, everyone. Cool. Back to question one. Jane. Question one. We're talking about the Bay of Fundy. And this beautiful picture here that you see on the left hand side is Cape Split. One of the great places that you can see the Bay of Fundy in action as it ebbs and flows. 100 million tons, 500 million tons, 220 billion tons, 320 billion tons. How much water flows in and out in a day in the Bay of Fundy? So pick one of those, let us know. That's question one. All right, number two, folks. For those of us who live in Nova Scotia, by the early 1900s, this land animal, was expatriated in Nova Scotia, failed reintroduction attempts were made in the province in 1939 and in the late 60s, but nothing happened. Which animal was it? So we no longer have it here in Nova Scotia. Is that the Canadian oh. lynx? Is that the cougar? Is that the woodland caribou or is that wolves? What was, what was that word again, Jen? Uh, I said extirpated, but it should be extinct. When they went extinct. Not extinct. Extirpated means they still exist, yeah. but no longer exist in the place they were naturally occurring. 
See, that's why we have a teacher on here, folks, to keep yeah. us honest. Oop. Dave Green helping us with this it. animal still exists in other places. It just doesn't live in its whole habitat or its former habitat of Nova Scotia. It's true. And which one is it? The Canadian lynx, the cougars, the woodland caribou, or is it the wolf? I'm yes. hungry like the wolf. Okay, moving on. Question three of the wonderful provinces that make up the Maritimes, which has the longest coastline? Was that A, New Brunswick, B, Prince Edward Island, C, Nova Scotia, or D, La Belle Provence, Quebec? Which of the three maritime provinces is I should have played Newfoundland, actually. That would, have, <laughs> that would have been a more of a tricky one. Which is a pretty a, a huge amount of coastline, if you consider it. Which yeah. province has the most amount of kilometers of coastline? And that's adding together the many islands at this no, point. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it just traces this, just the coastline, like all the way around coastline. Oh, really? Yeah. Even this bigger, significant islands? Uh, I don't think so, no. Like, it just goes around the, the coastline. Oh, okay. coastline is just the mainland. Just the mainland? Yeah. Hmm, interesting. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, number three, which province in the Maritimes has the longest coastline? Moving along. Number four, when you're here in Nova Scotia, how, what's the furthest away from the ocean that you can be? The furthest point away from the ocean. So if you're way back in the hinterland in the woods of Nova Scotia trying to hide from the ocean, which I don't know why you would do that. So if you were at the point of inaccessibility. You are at the furthest point of inaccessibility. That's a great point. Uh, a place that Dave Green loves and knows well. Um, is it A, 67 kilometers, B, 77 kilometers, C, 87 kilometers, or D, 44 kilometers away from the ocean in, it's in whatever direction, doesn't matter if that's moving toward the Bay of Fundy or the Atlantic Ocean, wherever you think that that may be. What's the furthest point you can be away from the, the coastline, from the ocean? I've never actually been place but i think it might be a fun adventure to one day to go find wherever this place is i bet you've been pretty close i think it's a good night of adventure grant okay yeah, yeah. Just for an idea. find that point i think it's around the kedgy area right it is yeah 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 but the, you know looking at the map now i kind of you know you might want to almost assume it's somewhere it's kind of up there around like you know, Saint east west or something, but uh, no, it's it's kind of down the south shore. And how far are you? Are you one of the four options? So we're moving along. That's question four. How far away from the ocean can you be in Nova Scotia? Number five. Moose currently inhabit Cape Breton Island, but where were they introduced from? Which province did they come from? Moose currently inhabiting Cape Breton Island were actually introduced from what province. Now this is a reintroduction because the moose were already there. They were hunted down and then they were helped to be populated again by this moose introduced from where? The Yukon, A, B, Manitoba, C, Alberta, or D, B, C. They brought some very fine meese, some moose back to Cape Breton. And now if you go to Cape Breton, it is a very good chance, particularly if you do the, you know, go up around Northern Cape Breton. I mean, you normally run into a moose of some kind along the way. Let us know if you've seen a moose. Oh, I saw a deer yesterday. Did you where? When I went for my little bike ride around the, the hood, um, right on the, uh, the flyer trail like early on in the flyer trail, um, a, a deer jumped right out in front of me. It's pretty cool. You know, I bet you the animals of the world are like, what, this is sweet. All those stupid humans aren't around messing with our jive. You know, they're just out having a great time cruising. I was thinking about that. Uh, all right, let's go, move on, keep going. Move on. 
Number six is definitely not a teepee. Houses made of wood and birch bark used by the Mi'kmaq peoples were called the what? Not a teepee, that is for sure. What were the names of their wood or birch bark houses made of? Now, Rebecca Thomas, <laughs> do you know the answer? Yeah. Probably knows the answer. She's actually probably seven times smarter than I am. So she probably knows most of the answers here. But this is question number six, not a TP. Houses made of wood and birch bark used by the Mi'kmaq people were called the what? Moving right along. We're not giving any, any options with that last one. This is something that you should know. Now, number seven of the outdoor brands out there, which well-known outdoor brand has the slogan, never stop exploring and that picture that you see is a classic Adam Cornick photo uh, but I should point out that that arch which he's standing under I believe I understand recently uh, succumbed to the forces of nature and just fell in is yeah. that right yeah it did it's just that what happens in the story of time arches are made and arches fall in down there on the bay of it's a beautiful place but look at the milky way up there too my god the stars are incredible so which well-known outdoor brand has the slogan, never stop exploring? That might be one for the sponsors. Now, this is a question that I love. I recently just listened to an amazing podcast all about what is probably one of the greatest adventures that human beings have ever embarked upon, which is the mission to the moon. Uh, we've done so a number of times, but haven't done so probably in almost 35 years. But during that famous Apollo 11 mission, which of the following companies built the spacesuit that the astronauts used during the Apollo 11 moon mission? Was that General Electric, GE? Was that the American classic Ford? Did they build it? Was it Levi's, the jean company? Or was it Playtex? Which of those four companies built the spacesuit? Was it Playtex, Levi's, Ford, or General Electric? I mean, they are pretty styling, like. They are looking good. Yeah. This was a picture that I pulled. This is from the Apollo 11 mission right now that you're seeing on the photo day, and they do look good. It's true. Yeah. The boys got their Sunday whites on. I, uh, the podcast was really good. I think it was called Nine Days in July, something like that. I, should, I wish I had one of these when I have to go to the grocery store in a couple of days, actually. <laughs> well, and interestingly enough that the astronauts, when they came back from the moon, were quarantined for two weeks because scientists didn't know if they would be exposed to any, you know, lunar flus or diseases while they were there. And uh, they were quarantined for that reason for a number of weeks afterwards. So before they went and saw the world after their big adventure, they were quarantined was, just like we are now. That was one of the craziest things. I remember Chris Hatfield, when we luckily got to meet him there a few years ago, he, he said that when he when they landed like he, he couldn't even walk they had to get carried out of the space shuttle yeah that's another big piece of it too for sure just due to the atrophy but i mean he was up there a lot longer than they were he was there for six months yeah, uh, right. they were only up there for two weeks or not even you know anyway, question number nine number nine uh so this is an association question so i'm going to read this to you a couple times nepal is to the himalayas as peru is to the what Let's just do that association again. Nepal is to the Himalayas as Peru is to the, maybe that image that you're seeing there might give you a hint. But Nepal is to the Himalayas as Peru is to the, what am I talking about here? This is number nine. <laughs> How is that a hint? <laughs> A random, okay, we're talking about mountains. Random clip art that I grabbed from the inter interwebs. Yeah, it looks like it's from like 1996. Yeah. When you're like doing like in the computer lab of junior high and they're teaching you clip art. <laughs> so Nepal is to the Himalayas as is Peru is to the... Finish that, finish that sentence with what you think makes the most sense for association. Moving on to number 10. The Pyrenees Mountains, because I have an obsession with mountain ranges. The Pyrenees Mountains are to Italy as to the Atlas Mountains are to which country? 
to the Pyrenees Mountains are to Italy as to the Atlas Mountains are to which country? And it does span a couple of different countries. So if you do are really super good at geography, you might have a couple of different answers, but I'm looking for one specific answer of a country relative to the Atlas Mountains. I think we should put these questions more at the start. After a few beers, these ones become really confusing. At least I, I know. <laughs> Uh, believe me, at two o'clock this afternoon when I was coming up with these questions, it seemed like a really good idea. So the Pyrenees Mountains are to Italy, what the Atlas Mountains are to this country. What country am I talking about? Number 11, what legendary Patagonia founder wrote the book called Let My People Go Surfing? What legendary, from Canada, originally now lives in the United States, but is a man of the world. Uh, what is the name of the founder of Patagonia who wrote the book, Let My People Go Surfing? Super interesting. And that picture on the cover looks like might be California. It looks like some really choice waves rolling in there. Definitely. I mean, I'd love to hear from you guys, but I mean, the thing I'm probably missing the most right now in terms of just getting out and doing adventure stuff is surfing. Uh, I know my man Adam Cornick's feeling me for sure. So that's number 11. What legendary Patagonia founder wrote the book, Let My People Go Surfing? Staying on the surfing theme for a little bit because you know it's my favorite. Number 12, what do you call a surfer who rides with their right foot forward? Just like this person in the photo is doing. When you ride with your right foot forward, what's, is, what that, what's that kind of surfer called? What's that style called? You're riding what? This photo was from uh, our sweet day with um, East Coast Surf School. East Coast Surf School, man. That was actually an amazing day. I mean, everything about that day was perfect. The sun was shining. It was super hot. The waves were perfect. It just was one of those days where like, man, Nova Scotia is the best. Remember the meal that Andy Hay cooked up on the, on the beach for us that day too? Was uh, you know, I don't actually because I didn't get to eat any of it. Oh. I, I, I ate all <laughs> <laughs> So number 12, what do you call a surfer who rides with the right foot forward? Moving on, number 13, looking stylish on this huge wave. I believe that wave that he's riding on there is probably in Tahiti, a wave called Chopu. Uh, and who is the, oh, it might be Pipeline too, actually, but I think it's Chopu, so it looks like it. Yeah. Um, who is the only person to be the youngest and oldest surfer to hold the World Surfing League title? He's also won the title 11 times. And he might be the only surfer that you can name. And he's a very handsome guy. I was just going to say, we should give a hint, and that's, that's the hint. <laughs> like I said, I was trying to make this a little easier for folks. Oh, that's, good. that's a good question. It's cool. cool. Great question. And uh, he's 47 years old now uh, and still is arguably one of the handful of best surfers in the entire world. So... Kind of like Dave was pointing out earlier about how these endurance athletes tend to get better with the age. Yeah, he's certainly one of them and still out there crushing and still showing people 20 years younger how to do it. Moving right along, number 13, name the trail that National Geographic named one of the best adventure destinations in 2012. This iconic trail is over 300 kilometers long, made up of 26 wilderness paths and intersects more than 30 communities. It is an incredible trail and it is right here in Atlantic Canada. Some things you might see along the way might be some amazing views, let's say perhaps of icebergs, suspension bridges, things like that. It's a pretty incredible place. Uh, and well, what's really amazing about it is that you can kind of like just you don't have to do the whole thing you can pick off little pieces of it along as you go so which trail what's the name of the trail right here in Atlanta, canada that covers over 300 kilometers almost entirely right along the ocean and finally number 15 this new brunswick provincial park boasts the largest peak in the Maritimes by the same name. The peak is the same name as the park. And the picture that you see here 
which uh, shows Chris and I uh, trying to hug the world uh, and missing. <laughs> this, uh, yeah, we're trying to hug each other. We just can't line it up. This is the highest peak. I, I think it should, largest peak can be, is, sounds confusing. It's the highest peak. Is it right. is the highest peak. Yeah, it is a better way of putting it. So that right there is the is not the highest peak. It's it's the mountain right next to the highest peak, but it does have the better view. And uh, we made our friend Adam Cornick hike up to that very same spot right in the middle of the winter in like four feet of snow. You remember that? Do you remember how you were feeling that day after your birthday uh, party we had the night before in the cabin? It had little to do with my birthday and everything to do with the fact that I fell out of a bunk bed. <laughs> It was definitely connected. To the- <laughs> yeah, it was uh, a rough, Jan, a rough Jan day. Played, uh, Jan played Plinko off the bunk bed uh, in the middle of the night, <laughs> laid it on the ground on me. Good still time. have the scars to prove it too, right here. If you look in right there, yeah, still have the scars to prove it. Amazing. All right, cool. Well, that's great. So we'll give everyone a minute here to email all of their answers. Um. Yeah. Good job, man. Those are good. Want to hear more about that story? Turn in, tune into Night of Misadventure. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's a good. That'd be a good one. It was pretty funny, and uh, the anger level of of Cornick when we were hiking up there was also hilarious. Yeah, it was real. I mean, it was, that was a real hike. It was. It was pretty. It was yeah. It was very grueling. There was like four feet of snow. I fell through a tree well at the very top, and it was double overhead to get out. It was hilarious. I had to crawl my way out of it. Yeah, good times. New Brunswick Provincial Park, one of my favorite places. It is an amazing place. I actually, I, I'll, I'll be honest. Like, I didn't even know it existed until about ten years ago. And then Getting a bunch of answers in. Amazing. All right, well, I'm going to bring us back into view here, and then we're going to do uh, the answers. So yeah. we'll give folks another couple minutes. Adam says he's still angry, which is fair. Yep. That was definitely fair. It is fair. I mean, that was a big hike, and he's a soft little guy. Shout out to Buffon, though. Oh, Buffon. I wish she was playing right now. How are we feeling? Dave, how you doing? How do I get back there? There it is. Dave's back. Hey. Every time Dave comes back, he's got progressively less clothing on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay, are we ready to roll with the answers to the questions? How's everybody okay. feeling out there? We'll give everyone just another minute. Um, looks like there's still a few people left to email in. Another big shout out to our title sponsor. Yeah. North, mm, North Brewing. Delicious. Delicious and nutritious. And there, as note for people who are trying their best to adhere to the stay at home orders, which I hope everyone's doing, um, they do delivery. If you live in the HRM area, they will drop the beer off at your door if you go online. And then if you are taking your one week or so trip out to get groceries and supplies and you want to stop by their brewery, they will do a contactless drop off. So you can pay for it. They'll drop it off on the table outside and you run out and pick it up once they're inside and drop it off in your trunk. So it's pretty well, easy. Check in your snares. You can. Uh... Yeah, there's a few breweries that are doing that, which is amazing. Um, amazing service right now. So keeping people, uh, keeping people hydrated in a safe way. I love it. Um, all right. We got a bunch of emails Let's get this wrapped up here. Let's do it, man. Yeah. Let's, let's do the answers. Okay. We're rolling through answers round three. Do Number one, we asked you each day, how much water comes into the Bay of Fundy and if you answered D 320 billion tons of water. Uh, which is an unfathomable amount. That is how much water, which is crazy. So if you can imagine that, the incoming and outgoing tide, that's one cycle, 320 billion tons of water. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Re- no, surely, absolutely. It actually move, it moves things. 
By the early 1900s, this land animal was extirpated in Nova it. Scotia. Failed reintroduction attempts were made in the province in 1939 and the late 1960s. And that's the woodland caribou. And I've heard it said that the forest of Nova Scotia would look vastly different if we had the woodland caribou still wandering around in there because they completely uh, changed the topography of the way the woodlands are now and compared to when they were here. So thousands of those things were roaming around through the woods up until 1921. Um, Taylor Morrison is wondering if that's just body hair on Dave Green there. And yes, of course, it's just body hair. He's a... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just keeps getting hairier and hairier. Number three, which coastline in the Maritimes has the longest coastline of any province, even though he threw in Quebec there just for shits and giggles. We're talking about Nova Scotia. Now, Chris, you said that this is just the mainland, so that does not include Cape Breton. Uh, oh, sorry. Not I, I did say the mainland. I meant just like uh, it, it includes the mainland of Cape Breton and the mainland of Nova Scotia. Uh, this is not including like Tan Cook Island. That's right. Yeah, I think if you add up all the islands, it's something like thirteen thousand or so uh, kilometers. Okay, cool. We yeah. have a lot of islands, man. We do have a lot of islands. Yeah, yeah. I think I think it's something like thirteen thousand something. We looked it up for a CBC episode once. And, yeah, I remember that. That seems about right. Yeah. Or maybe made up. I don't know. That's yeah, a lot of kilometers. Suffice to say, Nova Scotia has got one big coastline. Right. Huge coastline. Number four, if you are in the middle of nowhere in Nova Scotia, how far away can you be from the ocean in Nova Scotia? And that answer was answer A at 67 kilometers. And you're right, it is down near Kedji. Uh, when you, you, in fact, when you come into the community there where this happens, they even label it on the sign the furthest away that you can be from the water. Right. Only 67 kilometers. That's cool. Or I should say 67 kilometers. Why? Why would you say it like that? Well, because I mean, like, you know, I mean, Dave can speak to this and I've done it too. I mean, I paddled a lot of those rivers out of there and 67 kilometers can feel like a lot of kilometers. Oh yeah, no, that's true, yeah. Depends which way you're going. If you're going from the ocean to the 67 kilometers? Yeah, could be long ways. You could go both ways. You could go to the Atlantic. You could also ride it out toward the, the Sisabu River there, down toward uh, you know, the Bay of Bundy and Annapolis and such. Beautiful both ways. Sisabu is an amazing river. Lots of great rivers down there in the Southwest Nova. Number five, the Meese, the Moose, currently inhabiting Cape Breton Island, were actually introduced from what province? And that's Alberta. Like I said, there were moose there originally due to overhunting a number of different factors. Uh, that population receded quite a bit, and then it was bolstered by a population added to from Alberta. But am I correct in saying that largely the moose that are invasive to Newfoundland came from Nova Scotia? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how. I don't really understand, but I've, I've heard that before. Yeah, absolutely. We should do a whole separate night called fact-checking. Where we just spend an hour fact checking <laughs> the shit that we're throwing out here. <laughs> Welcome to fact check night. Yeah. All right, number six, not a teepee. Houses made of wood and birch bark used by the Mi'kmaq peoples were called wigwams. Uh, Rebecca Thomas, if there are other words that we are missing here, we'd there love. Is. I just got a text. She said there, Smith Francis orthography spelling is wick. Womb, which is I'll spell it right now on the womb. They're built by women and put up in a day. Wow. Not surprise me. Women are amazing. That is incredible. Look at that thing. Yeah, that's the real deal. But then again, I imagine what it might have been like. I mean, they were probably cozy all with in there with all kinds of blankets and stuff. I mean, it's still chilly though, going through the winter time and through those things. Oh yeah. Amazing, such, such, such ingenuity. Okay, number seven, Rolling, which well-known outdoor brand has the slogan, never stop exploring? Hopefully you got this one, a sponsor of tonight's event, The North Face. Uh, once again, the beautiful Adam Cornick, just throwing down some amazing image there on the Bay of Fundy on the right side. Uh, never stop exploring. It's hard to tell from this picture, but do you think he's wearing clothes in that shot? Is he? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
know. It could be a silhouette. Hey, he's wearing one a one piece leotard. Yeah. yeah, right. Like Spider Man. Spider Cornic. Yeah. It looks like he's about to just like Yeah, yeah, totally for sure. It's been around in there. That's true. Uh okay, moving on. Number eight. Which of the following companies built the space that the astronauts used during the Apollo 11 mission? And that was Playtex. Uh, other companies had tried to build a spacesuit that the astronauts were wear, wear but it was all of them were way too uh, unfunctional. Uh, and then Playtex and you know their their subsidiary companies stepped up and said, you know, we can make a spacesuit. And they were the ones who made the spacesuit that you can see to this day uh, in the Smithsonian. If you ever have a chance to go down to see it. Um, the, the spacesuits, incredible. I mean, and they're deteriorating, you know, after 50 years of, of non-use, but uh, amazing that that was able to, just, you know, keep them safe in the vacuum of space when they're up there on the moon. It really um, is amazing. Yeah. yeah, really. I mean, you know, we talk about, I mean, this obviously wasn't human powered. A lot of night adventures obviously uh, driven toward human power things. Um, maybe yeah. one day someone will get to the moon by human power, but you until are- that point still rests, I would say, is probably one of the greatest human endeavors of all time. Number nine. Nepal is to the Himalayas as Peru, we're thinking about mountain ranges here, is to the Andes, the Andes Mountains. Uh, The Himalayas are the tallest mountains in the world, the Andes being the second tallest mountain range in the world. So hopefully you followed my logic there, which is Nepal is to the Himalayas as Peru is to the Andes. Andes Mountains, which stretched pretty well down the whole spine of South America. Number 10, the Pyrenees Mountains are to Italy as are the Atlas Mountains are to Morocco. The Pyrenees Mountains are up in the north of Italy, a beautiful place to go. And just like in the north of Italy, in the north of Morocco are the Atlas Mountains. And they do stretch east of, of Morocco too. So if somebody did, you know, throw in the fact that it it could be uh, a different country, you potentially could be correct, but Morocco was the... Which countries will we accept? What's the answers? Well, that's a good question. Let me consult with Google Earth really quick. Uh, (laughs) We would also accept, does it go as far as like into Libya? I don't know. I'm going to just have a quick little little boo here. Uh, Some quick intelligent banter, Morocco, Atlas Mountains. I mean, they kind of stretch a little bit over into, uh, yeah, into Algeria. There's, there's a woman who I just started following who recently, as of like February like 20th, finished an expedition where she walked across Morocco with a camel, um, about 1,600 kilometers she walked with the camel ending this past February. I think her name's Allison uh, Morrison. I just found her on Instagram recently. Yeah, yeah that's the real deal. So uh, we're looking for Morocco as the answer, where the Pyrenees Mountains are to Italy as the Atlas Mountains are. They're meant to be amazing, too. Uh, they are referred to often as the rooftop of Africa. Uh, I've seen the comments here. Colin is wondering if he gets half points for Africa. I assume that's for... No. Mike. Yeah, you know what? You know, We'll give him half points for that because it is, um, you know, the Pyrenees are... Yeah, yeah, I could follow that logic. If he says Africa, we will we'll honor that for half a point. Okay, you heard it here. Number 11, my favorite number, which has no coincidence to this question, but what is a really interesting book, uh, an interesting philosophy from a well-known outdoor brand, a uh, Canadian guy. I had a chance to meet him years ago at a paddling symposium in Montreal. Uh, and this is Yvonne Schwenard. And he wrote the book, Let My People Go Surfing basically breaks down the principle that at Patagonia, if there's good waves and you want to go surf, you go surf. He's such a beauty. He is a beauty. And he had done amazing things, and including uh, came here to Nova Scotia uh, and backed the Nova Scotia Nature Trust, got up to, got to go to see the wild, the, the 100 wild islands on the Eastern Shore, um, got to go up there and hang out and uh, contributed in some dollars and some media support to get in that campaign off the ground. So uh, a person who's well known to Nova Scotia, uh, Yvonne Schwinnard is the answer we're looking for there. Uh, this should be an easy one, hopefully. Um, what is the stance or what style 
are if you have your right foot forward on the board, and that is your riding goofy, your goofy footer. If you've got your right foot forward, uh, it's kind of boring if you've got your left foot forward, which is called regular stance. But if you're the opposite way, you're goofy footer, and, and that would probably be true of snowboarders and skateboarders too. I think. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that again, man, that was an amazing day out there at the East Coast Surf School. And if you've never been out to Lawrence Town and tried to tried your hand at surfing, you should definitely give it a go this summer. They'd love to see you. Nico Manos, the first pro from Nova Scotia. Yeah, and a beauty. Him he, and his whole crew there. I mean, they've really put Nova Scotia surfing on the map. Uh, super great guy. And they, the East Coast Surf School does amazing things. So go out and check them out. Uh, who's the only person who's the youngest and oldest person to hold the World Surfing League title? And he's actually won it 11 times. And that is Kelly Slater. And look at that man. My God, he's beautiful. Yeah, he's such a, such a beautiful man. I'm he's like, not only a talented surfer, but a beautiful human. <laughs> beautiful. And again, like I was saying earlier, man, he's 47 years old now. It's still out there charging harder than most like 21 year olds. So um, as we pointed out a number of times tonight, I mean, that's not how old you are. You just keep out there, keep pushing it. Keep pushing it. We're back over to Newfoundland for question 14. And we talked about the East Coast Trail. It's 300 kilometers plus uh, of amazing vistas. Um, absolutely cool little communities that you get to walk through. The trail is really one of a kind. I'm sure many of you have heard about the West Coast Trail, but the East Coast Trail is something that you should definitely, even if you can't do the whole thing, like I said, you can knock off little points of interest along the way. Uh, even part of the East Coast Trail is right in downtown St. John's. Uh, Signal Hill, Soldier's Pond, both those places are absolutely amazing. Kitty Bitty. Kitty Bitty, yeah, yeah, exactly, for sure. And there are, oh, it's just so beautiful. Plus it's Newfoundland, so the people are amazing. And uh, you could potentially end your trip. Like you could start at the very Southern tip of it, uh, end the trip right there in St. John's, right there on, on George Street, which would be a hell yeah, great place to go to. It's really not that far away. It's really- Oh my God, it's so close. Not that far away. And finally, question 15 for those people who are just biting their nails, waiting to find out which province which park boasts the largest peak in the Maritimes? That's Mount Carlton at 820 meters. It's part of the Appalachian Range, which ranges all the way down through Atlantic Canada into the United States, down as far as Georgia. Would that be right? Yeah, Pretty yeah. Right down there in the United States, the Appalachian Trail, one of the longest uh, through hikes that people love to do, um, which you know takes people months and months and months to pull off, but. Uh, the top uh, terminus of it, some people say, is in Mount Carlton. And Mount Carlton, for those people who have never done it, who are into hiking, uh, wilderness camping, or wilderness experiences in general, it is exceptional. Uh, Chris can back me up on this one. Dave's down a ton there, too. Dave, you certainly can get it. It is one. exceptional. And again, it's not that far away. Like, once we're allowed to go places, I'm not telling you to go do it now, but like eight hours, you can leave Halifax and be in. This place and it's it, it'll blow your mind it'll blow your mind it's crazy that there's this like big hill with like alpine uh type like area on top it's really amazing yeah I guess um yeah it, it is one of my favorite places it's the only wilderness park in new brunswick too so yeah you got the nipisiquit river that drains out of it and then you also have the tobik river that drains out of it so there's these two lakes in the middle you can see one of them down here in the picture um there's these two lakes and they both, they drain in opposite directions and ultimately enter, well, one enters the Gulf of St. Lawrence, one enters the Bay of Fundy. Um, it's a really cool spot. So it was a traditional place to travel through there as well for people moving uh, by boat, usually canoe or, or sled. Um, you know, Chris was actually so moved by the beauty of Mount Carlton that one time he threw his phone into a lake and then threw himself into a lake. The lake that's right in the bottom of this picture. <laughs> Yeah, that was something else. That happened. It did happen. I rode a bicycle from this from this park to uh, Baxter State Park with my dog once. That's that's the real deal. Yeah, five hundred k, dog in the trailer. It was a good time. Good time. We we connected the peaks. 
So we are getting people responding 11 out of 10 from Emily, Dave McFarland, 10, Matt, 11, Nicole, 11, 12 and a half from Colin, uh, 9, 8, 5, 1, 10. Man, good scores. Yeah, no. Jade DeCoste with a 9 out of 45. Jade you know what? You're new to Nova Scotia. Nine out of forty-five ain't so bad, and hopefully you learned some stuff and had some fun. That's what it's all about. Nice work, people. Yeah, twenty-six. Yeah, what is everyone's totals? Who's who? Do because we're gonna have to do some calculations. What we'll end up doing, I think, is probably having to tally some stuff up and then announcing it maybe after we're off air. I don't know how people are probably sick of seeing us right now. <laughs> Deeply sick of us. Yeah. Uh, but you know i'm seeing like yes yeah, 25 out of 45 from that balcom that's pretty sweet 33 renee levangie 33 out of 45 uh, adam cornick thanks for coming brother colin 33 and a half yeah i gave him the half point for africa africa okay well, that's the highest score so far anyone else have a higher than 33.5 colin might be the lucky winner of the uh the North Face, BSSL, and the four beers and the swag bag. So we're going to give away three prizes. The top three, would you like to? Would, we're still going to ask you to send in your answers. Don't stop sending in your answers if you already sent them in. We're going to check them. Yeah, don't send the answers. Send, send the scores so that we can kind of get a better idea who's to verify. E email the answers. We need to fact check. It's a good point. Renee just said she would like to appeal the half point if it's for the win. Yeah, I don't, I don't blame you. Fair enough, Renee. That's an excellent point. Yeah, we'll, we'll take a look at that and uh, kind of verify. What we, uh, yeah. Anyways, thanks for coming in, guys. I don't, I don't know. Hopefully, this was fun. If there's, we'd love to have some feedback. Um, yeah. What kind of questions worked and didn't work? Technology seems okay. Africa is not a country like Italy is, so no half points. I, I kind of agree with that from Ace. I agree with that too. It's a good, really good point. If you don't know that, let's make it. I kind of backed myself into a corner when I said it spans a couple of countries. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, if you got Morocco, then you got the full point though. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But saying Africa is a little bit like <laughs> a little vague, of course. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll we'll have to take a look at that. But yeah, in the meantime, you know, this is just for fun, obviously. Um, we hope everyone had a good time. But if there's any recommendations. Um... Uh, we can verify the Dave's wearing pants. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah, okay. I win. Nice. Africa is definitely not a country, for those people uh, who are wondering. The country of Africa. The country, the mighty country of Africa. Um, yeah, so I think what we'll do, guys, is maybe we'll go offline here. We'll review the answers. Yeah. If anyone has any ideas on how to make this a little bit easier and smoother, let us know. This, to be honest, it felt pretty clean, though. Over yeah, it was a good time. It was nice hanging out. Hour, nice. I guess the total runtime is like an hour and 40 minutes of, uh, of time here. We could drop yeah, we'll the prizes. Make it a little faster next time, but that's, it's all good. I had a good time. I mean, hope everybody's hanging in there okay out there, wherever you are. I mean, it's a... Uh, yeah, it's a weird it's load a little bit. This feels weird even doing this without seeing people. I mean, I can oh, only Brett imagine. Ruskin's here. My gosh, Brett Ruskin. You yeah. are. And Sarah, Sarah had a really good idea um, doing just random draws for some prizes next time. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, definitely, Sarah. That is a good idea. Yeah, that's I a great idea. That. Then everybody we'll definitely make that happen. You just come and play and have fun with this, and you automatically have a chance to win. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we will. We'll give away some spot prizes if your name is Adam or if your name is not. <laughs> um, yeah, so we'll we'll go offline, I guess, guys, and then and then from there we'll we'll tally up the top three and we'll make an announcement on our Facebook page as the who the winners are. And uh, props to everybody for coming and playing. This is super fun. Uh, we had fun coming up with the questions. It was a lot more work than I think we thought it was going to be, but uh, totally worth it. Totally worth it. Uh, yeah, we might do it again if you guys want us to do it again um yeah let's do it i think yeah. it went to you buddy for uh doing all that copy and pasting today we really appreciate that yeah jan or uh dave did a huge amount of work too so props to dave 
um, yeah, this was great. And it, it worked out cutting out. Uh, something to do tomorrow night. Isolation bingo goes down. Yeah, the boys in town here. Retired to that. We'll be there. Yeah, well, I've been there every week. Still haven't won yet. Town heroes. I really wanted to win that Pax uh, vaporizer last week. It was hilarious. <laughs> well, one last big cheers. Thank you to our friends at North Brewing. Thanks, North. Uh, for the support in this. And uh, this has been a ton of fun, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. And we'll talk to you soon. Keep on adventuring. Yeah, keep on keeping on. Cheers, everybody. Stay safe. Don't actually go adventuring. Adventure in your mind. That's right. Apply for, <laughs> apply for the grant. Your mind. Apply for the grant. Dave and uh, Chris, you guys stay on here. Yeah. Okay. Cancel the live.